You are sealed inside a humming steel world the length of a city block, parked hundreds of feet below an ocean that never blinks. No sunsets, no streetlights, no weather, just a clock that speaks in routines and a crew that functions like a single well-oiled heartbeat. The weird part? It works. People sleep, eat, joke, fix, plan, and perform with the consistency of a metronome, even when the nearest horizon is a pressure gauge. If you think life underwater is just claustrophobia and canned beans, Buckle in. What follows is the fast lane tour of how submarine sailors eat, sleep, and work for three months without touching daylight. Before we begin, make sure to hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Your first surprise arrives before breakfast. The air tastes normal. That is not an accident. Behind the scenes, electrolysis cells split seawater into oxygen and hydrogen, like a tiny factory that never clocks out. Carbon dioxide does not get to loiter either. It is shuffled into chemical scrubbers that grab those molecules and escort them out of the breathing mix. The result? A cabin atmosphere tuned with the precision of a concert hall. You inhale comfort, exhale trust, and the machinery hums on. Equal parts science and silent promise. Sleeping on a submarine is a master class in minimalism. Bunks stack in tidy vertical apartments, each with a curtain that doubles as a do not disturb sign and a peace treaty. Space is personal in theory and communal in practice. Hot racking, sharing a bunk in shifts, turns time into real estate. When one watch ends, another begins, and the mattress becomes a baton in a never-ending relay. It sounds brutal until routine smooths the edges. Clean sheets, small lockers, and learned choreography make it less coffin and more capsule hotel with rules. The day does not care what the sun is doing. Crews march to a clock that slices time into work, maintenance, training, and rest. Watches tick by like innings, with handovers that feel rehearsed enough to earn applause. Whether the schedule follows an 18-hour rhythm or a 24-hour cadence, the idea is the same. Keep minds sharp, systems happy, and the mission invisible. You learn when the ship yawns, when the coffee sings, and when silence means focus rather than fear. Food is morale, you can eat, and the galley knows it. Imagine a kitchen the size of a hallway producing meals for a small village four times a day without a grocery run for months. Fresh produce is a sprint. Frozen, dried, and canned staples are the marathon. Storage is everywhere, beneath deck plates, behind panels, under bunks, like a culinary treasure map. Early in patrols, sailors literally walk on boxes disguised as floors. Week by week, the path lowers as the crew eats its way back to the actual deck. Culinary magic thrives in constraints. No open flames, tight footprints, relentless demand, yet plates land hot, varied, and surprisingly cheerful. Industrial convection ovens whistle through recipes, induction burners purr, deep fryers fight for space with steamers and mixers. Menus rotate so nobody gets locked into permanent breakfast or forever leftovers. Midnight meals are real meals, not a shrug. Coffee holds court at all hours because precision loves caffeine and caffeine loves sailors who must be alert at silly o'clock. Water on board is less limited resource and more managed miracle. Distillation plants pull salt from seawater, turning waves into showers, soup, and cooling for electronics that never sleep. Still, everyone treats it like a precious commodity because thrift equals stealth. Quick showers become an art form. Wet, stop, soap, rinse, out. The payoff is quieter pumps, happier engineers, and a ship that glides with fewer signatures for the ocean to whisper about. Waste management, the unglamorous backbone, keeps the habitat livable. Vacuum toilets make quick work of biology, routing it to sanitary systems that can be safely emptied under the right conditions. Dry trash gets compacted into neat, weighted containers designed to mind their manners on the way down. Cardboard rarely makes the voyage, it is stripped at the pier to save space. The unspoken victory here is simple. Nothing lingers, everything is accounted for, and the ship stays clean in ways you can feel but rarely see. Noise discipline is the ship's second language. Every clang is a conversation the ocean could overhear, so the crew speaks softly and steel. Doors do not slam, tools do not chatter, footsteps learn a considerate rhythm. This quiet is not just tactical, it is kindness. Someone is always sleeping, someone is always on watch, and everyone benefits when etiquette is as routine as breathing. Over time, the soundscape becomes a lullaby of pumps, fans, and distant machinery, a mechanical rainforest of perfectly normal. Training never gets a day off. Drills pop up like plot twists, fire, flooding, loss of power, medical response. The goal is muscle memory so strong that hesitation has no place to sit. Sailors 
trace systems with fingertips and checklists, learning not just what to do but why. New crew members chase qualification boards like finishing lines, earning their place through knowledge, repetition, and composure. Competence is not a badge. It is the price of admission to collective safety. The control room defies the stereotype of brass dials and spy movie periscopes. Think clean screens, modular controls, and a data ballet where navigation, sonar, and systems management dance in tight formation. Modern hardware respects the mission's need for upgrades, swapping a new capability without rewriting the ship's soul. The team at the controls lives in a world of faint echoes and calculated guesses, turning whispers and water into maps, margins, and decisions measured in heartbeats. Communication with the outside world is deliberate, thin, and precious. Messages arrive like postcards from another planet. News reaches the crew in curated sips, just enough to tether minds without tangling them. Personal notes are gold, handled with the tact of people who know that a single sentence can carry a week's worth of weather. Entertainment fills the cracks. Carefully chosen movies, a rotating library, car Hard games that become minor leagues, and inside jokes that age like fine cheese. Physical fitness adapts to steel geometry. A bike here, a rower there, some adjustable weights tucked where they will not offend physics, all stitched into shifts so nobody waits forever. The torpedo room sometimes moonlights as a gym because multi-purpose is a lifestyle. Workouts prioritize consistency over spectacle. No one is chasing a marathon time. Everyone is chasing circulation, mobility, and the kind of energy that keeps minds honest during the fourth hour of the third watch. Mental health is a group project. Privacy is rare, but respect is abundant. People learn the signs, the thousand-yard stare that just needs a quiet nod, the restless energy that yields to a quick story, the laugh that buys an extra gear for the next maintenance task. Chaplains, coursemen, and senior leaders become culture gardeners, cultivating habits that turn stress into momentum. Rituals help. A themed meal, a movie night, a silly award for the squeakiest hatch, small joy ages well underwater. Maintenance is the ship's heartbeat. Every system has a calendar, and every calendar is sacred. Filters swap on schedule. Lubricants get sampled like vintage wine. Valves take a promenade of test cycles, and logs become diaries of cause and effect. Here is a paradox. The best maintenance feels boring. That boredom is triumph. When the emergency never arrives, it is because someone gave a gasket the attention it deserved three watches ago. Navigation is part math, part art, charts, inertial systems, satellite updates when available, and the ocean's quiet murmurs combine into a confidence you can steer by. Sonar teams paint pictures with sound, separating natural chorus from the occasional metallic syllable. Patience is the sharpest tool. Decisions reward crews that are curious, skeptical, and orderly. The payoff is invisible, staying unseen, arriving precisely, leaving no wake of clues behind. Leadership underwater is less about speeches and more about predictability. Clear expectations do the heavy lifting. A good chief can read a gauge and a person with equal accuracy. Mid-level supervisors are the culture's backbone, translating plans into tasks and stress into calm. Wins are shared, mistakes become lessons, and credit spreads wide than blame. When things get complex, and they do, leaders shrink the problem to the next correct step. Safety lives in details. Labels matter. Tag out logs matter. The habit of pointing and repeating instructions matters. Complacency is the only villain with unlimited stamina, and the crew hunts it with checklists and questions. The atmosphere sensors do not care if it is late, they sing their truth at all hours. Before anyone turns a wrench, two brains and a procedure say hello. The most heroic outcomes are built from a thousand unglamorous yeses to the right process. Medical readiness is quiet competence. The sick bay is compact but thoughtful, stocked to handle everything from headaches to stitches. Corpsmen are part clinician, part detective, part counselor. Preventive care is currency, hydration, hygiene, sleep, and sensible workouts. Outbreaks are enemies the ship will not tolerate, so cleaning protocols are as routine as coffee refills. When something complex emerges, telemedicine joins the team with calm confidence and clear steps. Supply is a chess match played months in advance. Before sailing, menus meet math, calories, protein, shelf life, storage geometry. Each turns into pallets, crates, and a plan for where every tin and packet will live. The first days can look like a warehouse cosplay, but but the stacks shrink on schedule. Near the end, creativity becomes a seasoning. A clever baker can turn what remains into what a treat. And the crew's grin is proof that logistics is an emotional science. Culture is codified kindness. Politics sits on shore. Gossip burns oxygen better used elsewhere. Noise etiquette is gospel. Feet learn to step aside. Shoulders learn to pivot. Hands learn to help with a panel, a tool, or a tray. New sailors absorb the choreography by osmosis. Veterans 
anchor it with example. The result is not perfection, but predictability. And predictability is the currency of trust when the ceiling is a pressure hull and the floor is yesterday's ocean. Engineering courage shows up as restraint. Raw power is easy. Quiet reliability is art. Pumps ride on mounts designed to swallow vibration. Pipe runs wear insulation like tailored suits. Even the way screws turn water into motion respects the mission's need for hush. The ship asks its crew to think about sound the way architects think about light. Shape it, soften it, aim it, and live within it gracefully. Workdays bend around the unexpected. A sensor hiccup becomes a pop-up lab. A minor leak becomes a masterclass in gasket theory. Someone's tool rolls into a hard-to-reach corner and three people turn physics and patience into teamwork. Hours later, the equipment hums again, the logbook gets a neat entry, and the coffee tastes earned. It is not glamorous, but it is addictive to folks who love problems that say thank you when solved. Food traditions are the ship's calendar. A themed dinner marks a halfway point. A surprise dessert honors a qualification. Homemade pizza nights arrive like small holidays, crafted on sheet pans that have stories. Spices become passports. A simple stew can taste like home in five places at once, and you can track morale by how fast the line moves. The cook's apron is a cape without needing the cape. Recreation bends to steel. A quiet corner becomes a reading nook. A corridor hosts a fast but friendly trivia session. Someone learns to play guitar with strings that began this patrol as a spare afterthought. Card games surface like comets, burn bright for a week, then drift until the next downtime. The point is not distraction. It is togetherness that does not feel mandatory. Long patrol Patrols reward crews who can invent gentle chaos inside structured days. Sleep hygiene is tactical. Eye masks, earplugs, fans angled just so, and rituals that tell the brain you can stop scrolling now. Lighting respects circadian rhythms as much as schedules allow, shifting colors and intensity with a stage manager's touch. The machinery's baseline hum becomes the ocean's lullaby. People learn to nap like professionals, 20 minutes that feel like 60, and wake up ready to land a checklist with steady hands. Technical documentation is storytelling with diagrams. Every valve has a biography. Every breaker knows its lineage. New upgrades arrive with humility, integrating rather than interrupting. The reward is a ship where learning compounds. A sailor who mastered one subsystem last patrol can master the next this patrol, and the cross-training grid turns redundancy into resilience. When knowledge gets shared, fatigue has fewer places to hide. Coordination with the outside world is a ballet of windows and timing. Data rides specific channels at specific moments. Weather, currents, and traffic far above weave into planning even when you will never see a white cap. The crew feels those updates like whispers in a crowded room, just enough to adjust course, never enough to fuss. Restraint is a skill. So is patience. Both thrive when purpose is clear. Emergency response is performance art without an audience. Fires feel no awe for rank. Water does not care about your schedule. The crew rehearses until instinct looks like grace. You can watch a drill and see 10 small victories for every large step. A hand that already has the right wrench. A voice that lands at the exact useful volume. A runner who appears with a part before anyone asked. When nothing happens, everything worked. The science of atmosphere keeps its own beat. Sensors sniff for trace gases, the way a sommelier sniffs for cork taint. The system treats anomalies like riddles, not drama. Tiny trends get charted. Maintenance follows breadcrumbs. The curve bends back to normal. It all sounds mundane, but this quiet competence is the difference between living comfortably and merely enduring. Underwater, comfort is not a luxury. It is sustained performance. Personal effects are curated like a tiny museum. A photo clipped inside a curtain. A book that travels from bunk to bunk until it turns soft at the corners. A lucky pen. These objects become anchors in water that never sit still. Shore leaves a breadcrumb trail of memory that leads straight back to why the job matters. On hard days, that trail is a map out of the fog and into the next good joke. Routine breeds creativity. Someone designs a bracket that saves 10 minutes on a daily check. Someone else writes a quick script not the theatrical kind, the make-this-instrument-behave kind that spares a dozen keystrokes. Leadership notices. The small fix becomes the new standard, and suddenly a ship halfway around the world adopts the same tweak. Innovation on board is rarely loud. It is relentless, pragmatic, and contagious. The ethos is simple. Take care of the ship, and the ship takes care of you. That pact is the quiet soundtrack under every choice. What to pack, how to speak, when to ask for help, where to store the last jar of peanut butter. Three months underwater does not just reveal character, it edits it, sanding rough edges into teamwork and sharpening patience into a tool. People emerge with a calibrated sense of what matters and what was just noise on land. When the patrol clock runs down, the ship does not relax. 
it rechecks. Logs get scrubbed, inventories tallied, maintenance queued for the moment the lines are tied. Morale hums because completion is its own kind of oxygen. The crew has built a floating city that worked flawlessly in a place that does not want visitors. That is the whole trick, bringing land-like life to a water world without disturbing the water or the life. What makes this all possible is not one miracle device or a single heroic habit. It is the stack. Atmosphere control layered with disciplined schedules, layered with culinary logistics, layered with maintenance rituals, layered with quiet respect. Take away any layer and the whole load sinks. Keep them all, and three months pass like an oddly shaped semester. Challenging, repetitive, surprisingly funny, and deeply satisfying. If you strip the theater away, you are left with an elegant equation. A submarine is a pressure hull plus a power plant plus human beings who trust one another enough to share space, sleep, and responsibility with zero slack. Eating well fuels it. Sleeping well stabilizes it. Working well proves it. That is how you live underwater for a season and come back sharper than you left with stories that taste like salt and sound like teamwork. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means a lot.